exchange attributes uh, control data is not done. Yes, um, so there is no locking of the data at this point in time. That's part of what this idea of the workspaces and this, the change management will be when that happens. Um, the way that we track, let me do it this way. Um, the way we manage change control today is actually through, um, uh, sorry, is through the uh, RTC. So RTC is not just used for code management, it's actually used for managing all of the workflow as well. So if you want to take a, a group of requirements and say, these are belong to enhance more request or change request XYZ, and I want to track that work that's being done, then I would actually go and do that. Okay, let me uh, see if I can find one here. I'm just going to grab, I think, this object, just make it easy. I'm going to add a link to it, and what I'm going to use is the tracked by. So track by, I'm attaching to a work item that actually would do an RTC, and I can, control, I can control who's supposed to action it, who's supposed to do what with it, um, when it's been actually actioned or taken care of, when it's been resolved. So I can track all of that. Implemented by would be to the actual code or the build plans themselves, and validated by would be to test plans and test cases. So RTC is really the, the engine behind the change management tracking. Why did I make changes in the first place? How do you manage change to reuse requirements, uh, i.e. modifying in one module and the impact other modules? Well, that's, to me, that's where I need to understand where, it, at least until word streams comes into full, um, into the full DA, into the full product. That's where I have to uh, understand where is my used in, used in modules. And that's where I really need to have this understanding and collaboration of, I'm just going to try and find another one, which I'm in the system stack, where I can see here that something's already getting used somewhere else. So in this case, the heading below is a requirement. If I hover over it, I can see what is actually there. Now, you may choose to put things under formal change control such that, you know, you don't change a requirement, you don't change an attribute unless you have a reason to. So you have an ER, you have an answer request, a change request, but some sort of work item that's going to track that change and who, and part of that work item is going to be into the investigation that can I change this for everybody or do I have to branch this off? This needs to become a separate requirement. As I stated right now, part of that process is manual, but it can be tracked with the workflow in RTC. And I look forward to when that work stream and things come into the actual product. Uh, this is kind of an interesting question. I don't know how to really answer it, but I want to ask it anyways. That is, uh, what is the nominal training requirement for several roles for Doors Next Generation, i.e. Administrator, Requirements Analyst, Project Manager? <laughs> um, that's a little other question. So I can tell you that for all the customers, what we actually did is we broke up the standard training um, that used to sort of exist under IBM days. So we broke up the training into more modules, training modules and about six of them for requirements management. And then we cover things like administration configuration, um, how to do reviews and comments, or what we call the collaboration training module, um, linking, editing, and then also linking for um, RM for developers and RM for testers, if you will. So there's like six modules in general. Depending on your role, you would take two or three of those modules. So let's say if you're a developer, you would take the generic overview of RM, and then you would take maybe the collaboration training module, and then you would take the how do I create links and associate with work plans and stuff training module. If you're the administrator um, and you are not going to be an engineer, you would take you know the administration, the overview, but you wouldn't necessarily take the one on editing and creating, etc. So each of those, I would say that the entire set of the training module would be put together with probably about a two, two solid days of training. Um, for any one given role, it was typically half a day to a full day. Next question, uh, and I don't know how you can actually answer this, but it was kind of written uh, strangely to me, was how about tables of those next generation and migrating them? I think that